Hi, 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 hey. As an electronic music producer, we sometimes struggle creating arrangements that flow and also sound organic from start to finish. But I stumbled across this amazing, easy, simple way of creating arrangements while making my latest single, Tea and Milk. Yes, that's the name of it. <laughs> and this technique solves all of these problems through loops, yes, loops, and expression control. So let me explain. I wanna now share this with you. Also subscribe because if you wanna see more content like this, which is cool content, because I wanna see you here more. So let's get into it now. So first step, we're gonna find three to five loops or elements that really fit together. So I have mostly focused on elements. So example, I have drums here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five different drums. So they're layered drums. Then we have also a bass made with Roland Cloud, Juno 106. Then we have also chords that I actually use my synth organ to create. And a little abbreviated chord progression. And then we have a little bit violin pizzicato, which I recorded using my violin. There's not much else happening, but it sounds cool. So next thing is that you're gonna have them in session view. We're gonna put them into one scene like this. So the way that we just press play from the scene and it plays it. And it sounds cool already. So the important bit is that all these samples already sound great together. And now we want to arrange these into a song. Third step is separating all of them into groups. I want to do low end together. So bass plus all the drums together. So highlighting all of them, command G. And this group, I rename it to low end and then we have chords and the arp. So this is the organ and then Oh, I made an audio track that can happen sometimes. And then we had the violin pizzicato. So one G, command G and violin. Violin. <laughs> it's a violin now. Sounds more fancy, doesn't it? Okay, so we have low end organ and violin. <laughs> Oh, I'm too funny. Uh, then we have step number five. Oh no, step number four. So we're gonna now go into audio FX and we're gonna find audio FX that we think could fit really well to these groups. So this is part of this technique that you might need to just kind of play around with for a while, especially if you are kind of new into Ableton Live and you don't really know what kind of FX would sound good. One good place to start from, whether you are experienced or a beginner, is go into utilities audio effect rack and then from there we can go into performance performance and dj so my favorite is build and break so i'm gonna put that into the low end group and i might also put that into the violin <laughs> Um, then for the organ, I might put frozen smear. So we can start with those ones. We can always change them later. So step number five. Now we're going to get out our MIDI controllers that have nubs and sliders. For this one, I will use my monogram CC controller. It's a modular one, so it comes in parts and I can just kind of reassemble or I can add into it different pieces that they sell on their website. Three sliders and then we have three knobs. And the great thing is that these knobs also do a command when you press it. Then we have three buttons here and two extra buttons. It comes with its own user control center. So it already recognized straight away Ableton Live. And I can go to each one of these controls and we can go to example this slider here. You can see CC23. So what's happened here is that I've already gone to MIDI mode CC23 channel one and we can add any number we want to. Otherwise we can have a Mac OS mode, MIDI mode, joysticks mode. Another thing that I really, really like about this is that I can also color code it. The fact that we can see the color coding in the actual controller is so practical for this kind of workflow. It allows us to remember a little bit better what effect 
what thing is where in which button. So now we can go into Ableton Live. We're going to go into the top right corner of Ableton Live, click MIDI, and we're going to go to the group tracks. I'm going to go to the beat repeat section and then turn this knob. So it says now 124. So it recognizes it, which means that when we go back to out of MIDI, now you can see that I can control beat repeat with this knob here. So let's have a look how it sounds when we are playing the sound. So let's go. Fun. And then what we can do is start kind of going through each one of the instruments and map every control that we want. Echo, there we go. Filter cutoff here for the drums. For the Juno, effect depth for the second slider, as well as the volume of that track. But for that one, we need to go here and just add the zero is what the maximum value of that. So we, when you open the browser window and when you're MIDI mapping, you can see all the mapping that you're doing. So now, So on the organs, what we will do is that from, from the frozen smear, we're going to map the short long. Add that into the third knob. There we go. And then we have only one is left, which is violin. And we're going to go and add dirt face, echo, as well as beat repeat, all in one slider to add some movement. And because we also have these buttons here, what I can do is I can sign some extra effects on them and then they just will toggle it on or off. So example for the low end, what I'm gonna add is, what do I add, what do I add? Um, example phaser. And what I will do is again go MIDI, the on off button there, and then click one of the buttons go here and just make it so that it's toggle if we want to or if we want to have it as a momentarily add some really cool repeat repeats so we map it into the second one so it's not a toggle it's only momentarily <laughs> Next step is that we're going to practice how to play this. So we're just going to jam with ourselves without kind of recording it, without doing anything. We're just kind of memorizing what, which control does what. I don't want to add too many. So having these three couple buttons, as well as a couple of the sliders, that's kind of enough for me right now, because that's already a lot to remember, a lot to play with. So what we'll do now is take off solo. We're going to go into the scene, activate it, and we will start playing. is recording what we have practiced into arrangement view. So we're going to go to arrangement view, make sure that it starts from the beginning. So we click the cursor to the beginning of the session and then we press record. Now we're just going to play and jam exactly as we did before.
I could do that forever. It's just so nice. It just feels good. Feels so good. Now we have a draft. Obviously, it might be that something like really hits and it's amazing and it sounds like you can really just have it as a whole song straight away. But sometimes you just need to go back. Maybe you need to customize some of the automations that we created. Use this as a draft and like a template or use this as an extra way of creating certain movements or transitions. So example, when I was creating tea and milk, I end up creating a couple different arrangement versions. So, so when you go to the current project uh, in the browser, you can see that there's two sessions. So the other one is created with this technique, creating really cool lifts and drops. And the other one is created using subtractive arrangement techniques. So what I did is that I actually went to the subtractive arrangement and then drag and drop some of the groups that I really like, meaning that I could just separate all the cool effects and very organic flowy transitions into the more blocky loopy type of arrangement. So actually these two arrangement techniques work perfectly together, ending up in a very nice flowy arrangement, which is now tea and milk. So remember to check out Monogram CC from the link down below. And also there is a live performance video that I created last year where I use this in an impro, live performance improvisation. So if you want to see it in another use, check that out. I'm going to link it down below. Discussion about MIDI controllers, expression, arrangement, music theory music production, everything continues in Discord. So go into my Discord because it's full of lovely, nice, amazing people. Uh, so you will like it there, I promise, because it's kind community which encourages you to learn and love what you learn. Here are my beautiful, which way? Here, maybe. Are my beautiful Patreon family. Love you.